up at the big league, an assistant coach with the Boston Celtics. Opening tap, won by the Aggies. That's Ezra Magnon with the basketball. Works it over to Caleb Fuller. Aggies coming off a very tough loss at home on Sunday, 79-60 to over the Academy of Art, trying to regroup after a three-game losing skid. Magnon with it into the lane, throws back to the lefty Fuller. Fuller goes up, has a shot partially blocked and out of bounds. That's Alfonso Anderson, the Utah State transfer, the six foot six senior out of Tacoma. He's the team's leading scorer. Shot clock down to zero. Obviously, they're going to have to reset that. Tommy Nunez, a very experienced college official, along with Tom Nally, go over to the scorer's table. They try to figure out what is going on. They'll get the shot clock fixed eventually. Can't be more than 24 seconds because it's 1936 on the game clock. They'll probably put about, I would guess, eight seconds back on that clock, maybe nine, as they await to, to get that fixed here. And they do go to six, so there you go. They match up the game and shot clock. So it'll be Aggie ball along the baseline. Addy Adebayo, one of two players from London, England, passes it in to Magnon. In the corner, three balls up and in for Magnon. And for an Aggie team only shooting 27% from beyond the arc, Magnon with a three to start the game. He's the first team all Big West conference selection. Made the team last year, freshman of the year, two seasons ago. Anderson with it for the Tigers. Now Jordan Bell. Pacific working it around the perimeter. Now jump shot up top. No good from Bailey. And the rebound taken by Adebayo. Aggies had a 5-0 lead on Sunday. And then 12 straight unanswered from the Academy of Art. And uh, the Aggies never regained the lead in that game. Pepper, wraparound pass for Christian Inigwe. Team's leading scorer right now as they work it Back around left side, the man Yon drives into the lane, but traveled with it first. He did indeed take a step trying to make that move on Pierce Crockwell. So the Tigers coming off the win against Arkansas Pine Bluff, 74-50. That was four days ago. They start their first of three road games. That win against Arkansas Pines women, 3-0 the score here as they stop it yet again for Crockwell as he came across the timeline and the shot clock is still not functioning properly. So they're gonna try and get that fixed inside University Credit Union Center. Everybody ready to play some basketball and they just don't have the scorer's table quite ready to get it going yet. So they move down the shot clock to 27. Haphazard start to this game as Anderson will inbound at midcourt. Throws back into the backcourt for Crockwell. Re-enters. Crockwell on the Heritage logo here on Bob Hamilton Court. Throws the left side to Anderson. Anderson on the diagonal for Bell. The lefty three up and short. And the rebound to Caleb Fuller. So the Tigers 0 for 2 to start this contest. Magnon with it, hands off to Pepper. Pepper's really had a cold shooting touch in the last few games. One of the Aggies' best perimeter shooters. Seven threes on the year. Takes a dribble there, 18-footer doesn't go, and an over-the-back call will go against Caleb, Caleb Fuller. So the loose ball foul against Fuller. That'll be his first foul. Crockwell with it for the Tigers. The junior out of Tacoma. Gets it to Bailey. Bailey now left of the key to Bell. Tries to set a screen for Bailey, and the Tigers turn it over. Again, these two teams will play again at the Spanos Center on December 16th. It is the 97th all-time meeting between these two schools. Pacific has dominated 82 games to 14. Of course, Pacific, a long-time Division I member. The Aggies made the transition a little over a decade ago. Shovel pass inside of Nigway. Turn around, jumper left it short. Rebound taken by Jordan Bell. Tigers in transition. Three ball left side off the heel. No by Bailey. And the rebound to the Aggies. Manyon bounces it over to Pepper. 
into the corner, Fuller, he'll launch a three ball. It's off the heel, and the ball taken by Bailey. So both teams missing threes. Three minutes into the ball game, it's still three nothing Aggies. Bell will try it again. That on the angle popped in and out. Ball out of bounds, last touched by UC Davis. So the shooting number's anemic to start this game. It'll be Avdolovich to inbound for the Tigers. Luke is a local player from Folsom High School, Vista Del Lago. Transferred from NAU as the baseline jumper doesn't go from Avdolovich. And the Aggies control. So rebounding a key to this game. Aggies doing a nice job on the defensive glass so far. We do have an illegal screen call against Christian and Igwe. So that'll give it back to the Tigers. Second team foul against the Aggies. Aaron Murphy will be the first substitution of the game. The redshirt freshman will check in for Inigwe. Murphy with the goggles on, maybe the most effective player in that loss on Sunday. Came off the bench and gave the Aggies some good energy. Evdolovich works it over to Crockwell. Crockwell waiting for the screen. Brings it right side, crosses back to the left. Has the open free throw jumper, rolls around and out. And another miss for the Tigers. Fuller with the rebound for the Aggies. Murphy, quick pass inside. It's deflected by Crockwell and taken by Anderson. Up top now is Bailey. Works it left side for Bell. Entry pass. Back for Bailey. Turn around jumper, and there it is. Little semi-hook shot from Bailey, the junior out of Fairbanks, Alaska. Played his high school ball at Monroe Catholic. The team's leading scorer finally gets specific on the scoreboard. We're four and a half minutes into the contest here. Three, two, Aggies. Mignon circles around the three-point line. Throws into the corner for an open Pepper. He'll let it fly. No good. And the shooting woes continue for Eli Pepper. Tigers in transition. Anderson scoops and scores. And Pacific takes the, their first lead of the game. 4-3, Tigers. And again, transition points for Pacific. That's where they want to play this game. Mignon on the cut along the baseline. Double team throws to a trailing. Murphy gets it off the glass and in. Great dish back to Murphy. Aggies go back on top. And now an almost turnover. Crockwell got it back. Gives off Anderson. Along the baseline for Jordan Bell. He's going to work on Fuller. Fuller goes to the ground. Longtime coach of the Santa Barbara Gauchos as well. Pepper takes the baseline jumper, got it. That's important for Eli, he's really been struggling. Yeah, he's really been struggling from the floor. It's good to see the ball goes down. All of a sudden those open threes will start going down for him. Bailey with it for the Tigers. We'll give up top to Anderson, the Utah State transfer. Kick back now, Crockwell. Trying to work it inside past, you know, knocked Scott, out of bounds by Adebayo. One of the of emphasis for the Aggies today was their toughness. And they've definitely come out and shown that. They're, they're doing everything they can to get the ball into the paint. They're physical here. They've blocked out exceptionally well. They've given up, I think, one offensive rebound only. They, Coach Les got his point across. No question. Practices uh, yesterday and on Monday were certainly very physical after that loss on Sunday to the Academy of Art. Is there Anderson with the up top three? Yeah, that's a beautiful three. This is what UOP will do. They'll hit threes or they'll drive it to the rim. And you're used to battles with Pacific. You had many of them down at Santa Barbara, and of course played them here at UC Davis as well. Yeah, they were much different teams back there with Bob Thomas, and they were running sets after set after set. This is more of an open court team. Pepper in the lane missed a wide open layup after a beautiful move that time. Yeah, it was a great drive. He just got to finish. Score tied at seven. Bailey on the angle will work on Pepper. Back to the bucket, goes with the left hand flip and got it. That was just a nice isolation play that time. Bailey's the type of player you win with at this level. He's the 6'6", six, 6'5", six, six, wing player that can do everything for you. He's a really nice looking player. 
The Tigers predicted to finish eighth in the West Coast Conference. We know how competitive that conference is. Of course, Pacific, a longtime member of the Big West and one of the powerhouses when they were in the Big West. Yeah, it's funny. UOP was either the best or they were, they were out of the top four. They kind of didn't hover in between too much. Not at all. Magnon's pass deflected out of bounds. Three on the shot clock now. The Aggies are going to have to hurry to get a good shot. Yeah, they will, but you know what? Three seconds is a long time for one of these kids. They catch it, they shoot it. They only have to do is to step Curry, just step back about 28 feet and let it fly. We had a chance to talk to Leonard Perry, and he talked about his players wanting to play like the Warriors, and he, he's okay with that because the Warriors are so fundamentally sound. You don't normally hear that about NBA play. Yeah, with the exception of the turnover, how they play is phenomenal. Yeah, that's what I told you, Steph Curry. That was Steph that's right there. opens the game with a three and then hits another one. Man, Jan's second three of the game, the – Preseason first team all Big West selection. Makes it 10-9 Aggies. Back the other way, a sweet J from Bailey. He's got it going. Bailey is a really good looking player. Look at the two guys on the floor that have to have big games. Bailey's one of them. Yeah, he's the team's leading scorer, just under 13 points a game. The junior from Fairbanks, Alaska. Magnon feeling it, didn't get that to go, but the rebound tracked down by Pepper and a reset of, of the shot clock. This is where the Aggies have got to grind them a little bit. You got to make them defend. You got to keep them grinding in your sets. They do not want to have to defend the Aggie sets. Pepper fade away on the baseline. Got it. A little 16 footer for Eli Pepper. Yeah, the lids come off for him. This is going to be fun for him tonight. Under the 12 minute mark here in the first half, a media timeout coming up at the next whistle. Bailey will work it over to Avdovic, the Sacramento native. Now to Anderson, working against Caleb McGill on that left post, throws it up wildly, and Aaron Murphy with the rebound. Yeah, both teams are getting good shots. They're both getting what they want out of their offense. The physicality of Davis is noticeable on the defensive end and rebounding the ball. Yeah, and, and Leonard Perry, he's, he's a guy who's known who really wants his team to rebound. Well, yeah, he comes from a rebounding background. He was with Larry Eustachie for years, and that was the rebound king. And uh, he, he grew with that. When he coached at Idaho, they rebounded the ball well. Tigers in transition. Avdovalich, a great shovel pass to Crockwell, who lays it up and in. Uh, Cockrell.
Hawks needed to see right there. The Aggies feeling at four three-pointers in the game now as they go back up by four. I love Bailey. I love that size. I like the six foot five, six foot six, versatile athlete with a big body. He's strong. He can post. He can drive it. He's the key for them, I believe. And Cottrell with the ball right here has got to penetrate more and Bailey. find more gaps. Yep, Bailey with it. Now goes up and has his ball smushed by Bora. Nice block by the big man. The big man showed his presence right there. That was a very clean block, and he gets the ball. Don't they say defense always travels from Italy? <laughs> I don't think a lot of guys in Italy are playing defense. <laughs> well, Bora did on that play. Yes, he did. Pull up jumper milling off the hill, no good. Offensive rebound, Bora, or excuse me, Fuller. He had his shot swatted. In the corner now, Milling for three, it's down. Yeah, that was the right guy to find right there. Milling's, Milling's feeling it, his stroke looks great. That's three, three buckets he's got. I think it's a second three. Yeah, he's got two threes. Magnon has a couple of threes, and the Aggies have opened up their largest lead, 23-16. Yeah. Blake, great pass inside, putting it up and in. Freeman, what a pass. That's a tremendous pass. Nice catch and finish all in one motion. That's how Freeman has to affect the game near the rim. He's not going to do it, I don't believe, with his back to the basket. Bora has it up top. There's a backdoor pass. It's deflected out of bounds. That's a tough pass for the big man. Well, top. the big man has good eyes. He sees things, and there is a, there is a slight opening, but he doesn't have the skill set to get the ball where he's seen. He does see an opening, though. So Bora will check out. Ultimately, he'll be able to make that pass. Just a freshman, one of four international players on this Aggie team. In college basketball, every year just becomes more international. Yeah, it does. I mean, Davis, Davis has got that international recruiting budget going now. It's a little unlike it was when I was here. Not quite the same. You didn't have quite the same uh, budget to work with? <laughs> I couldn't have afforded one airline ticket overseas to sign somebody, let alone get them back here. He still managed to win the national championship as Blake is called for the charge. That's a great defensive play right there. Draws the charge, gets him going the other way. That's as big as a dunk at the other end or hitting a three. That is an emotional play for a team that's been struggling. Yeah, you talked about it. You know, what's the gut check going to be for the Aggies tonight? Well, they're showing up. Yeah, the happiest people about having a game tonight were the players. They wanted to get away from the coaches. <laughs> they want to get back out on the floor and just play and prove that they're better than what they played against Academy of the Arts. How do you handle that as a coach when you have a disappointing loss like that? Your team's struggling a little bit. As Magnon makes a great play, how do you deal with that in practice? Well, you, you, you don't want to make practice fun, but you don't want to beat them up to the point where they can't perform. They obviously did it right because they're coming out now. They're hungry to play. They want to prove they have more in their gas tank than what they did in their last three games. 25-18 Aggies. Bailey has it stripped away. And here comes Billy with a great double team on the low block. Yeah, they're aggressive. The Aggies' aggression level is very high. It's actually they're more aggressive than UOP right now. And they've got the ball flowing. And the three they stretch shooting. this league to 10, which is a really good lead at this point of the game. And this type of game where it's a grind, a 10-point lead seems like it's about 20. Yeah, Pepper, everybody shooting threes. It's getting contagious right now. Double-digit lead for the Aggies. And now an over and back, or will it be saved? A oh, great hustle by Crockwell, but he did go over the line. Over Scott, Scott you're ball. right. Misses become contagious, and so do makes. You see teams at the foul line. You see them shooting threes. You see that. It is a momentum game, and obviously the Aggies right now have been let out of jail free card, and they're feeling much better about themselves and the staff's excited, so it's, that's a good sign for them. UOP on the other side is going to have to dig deep right now and start grinding with them right here. Yep. Mignon handling on that Heritage logo. Gets to the free throw line, 14-footer, missed it. Murphy fighting for the rebound, it goes out of bounds. That was a good shot. He put the ball right on the back rim. He got it high. He looks good. The, there is no reason when you look at the numbers that the Aggies are being out-rebounded the way they've been out-rebounded so far this year. They have good bodies. They're physical. They're bouncy. There's no reason. They should be group rebounding. Yeah, it's been close to 16 a game. Crockwell keeps the dribble alive, drives inside. Great crossover. Yeah, he's he's got a great crossover, and he's really quick. I watched him in two games over in Hawaii, and they couldn't stay in front of him. And UOP generated ah, 30, 40 percent of their offense off of him dribble penetrating. Yeah, now he wears three. I don't know if I call that the Iverson crossover, but it was effective. <laughs> He's got a poor man Iverson going. That's not bad. <laughs> Except he doesn't shoot it like Allen did. 
This is the first free throw. Here's a kid that knows what he does and, and, and he plans on doing it well. He takes mid-range shots. He takes shots at the rim. He does not shoot a three. Yep. It's not in his strength. It's not in his wheelhouse. And I respect that when a kid plays to his strengths. Yep. Is it a blessing and a curse, though, when Addy catches it outside and they're not guarding him? Can that hurt the offense at times? Well, it can if you're not quick enough to go by you. I mean, they can double gap him and they're still going to go by him. The only guy quick enough really to stay in front of him is Ezra, and even he isn't going to stay in front of him when he gets ahead of steam. You give him two dribbles and come at you, he's, he's quick. Yep. Pepper gives off the Magnon, gets the double staggered screen, kick back Pepper, passed up on a three, drives inside. Into the corner, there's Addy with that three, did not go. UOPs decide to build full switching. There's five man switching defense right now, and Davis is patient enough to find the mismatches. They did a good job with that. Jordan Bell with it, will get back to Crockwell. Into the corner now, Anderson will let go of three. No good, rebound Addy out of bio. Tigers have had some good looks at open threes, but they just haven't made them. Yeah, the, you know, they're a good three-point shoot, shooting team statistically. I still think their game is getting to the rim and getting to the foul line. That's something you have not seen them do is get to the foul line. And Jan out for Pepper. The angle three is down. Tell you, this is an Aggie team that you see. I've watched numerous Jim Les teams. When they shoot it, they're a monster. They're tough to play against. Their defense feeds off of it. And this team tonight's making shots. Yeah, that whole Aggie bench is up right now. They are into this one here in the first half. Up by 12, their largest lead. On the attack, Bell. Um, NBA prospects at this time. Bell misses the front end of the one and one. So the score remains 31-19, Aggies. They just steadily built that lead, Bob. Yeah, they have. Well, you've made seven of 11 threes. You're going to build a lead. You're going to have a lead. And they've come out on fire. Magnon with it, runner at the right foot, left it short. Ball to the deck. Aggies get the 50-50 ball. Kick out Fuller, three, popped in and out. And the rebound by Bell. But the Aggies are out hustling the Tigers right now. Yeah, they are. I'd like to see them on, on that when they get it back out and they got a good 20 seconds to work the ball. I'd like to see them move it a bit more to make them have to guard a little bit. UOP does not want to have to guard the Aggies for a long period of time. Anderson, it gets double coverage off glass, left it short. Yep, that, that's a hard shot. You got to score over, you got double team, you got to score through two guys. Fuller for Pepper. Let's see if the Aggies have the patience to get the ball back at the rim here. They need to get it inside. Or you can just spin 360 pretty, into the lane. Pretty good timing on that. That's why he's a first team all Big West performer right there. Uh, he's a special player. Aggies up 14 now as they continue to increase the lead. Three ball, that's gonna be missed badly by Bell. Foul against the Aggies, however. You know, what I'm here. talking about with the Aggies of needing patience and get to the rim, this is what Pacific needs. They need to get the ball to the rim. We have as their, my emphasis in the game for Pacific was open court transition, they're not getting that. Get to the rim, they're not doing that. Get to the free throw line, they haven't done that. Uh, inside out threes, they haven't done that. So, I mean, they're just not doing the things that they need to do to be successful at this time. They'll have a chance here to get a couple back at the line. It's Bo Outlaw, or excuse me, Greg Outlaw, who makes the free throw. Well, there's an old NBA player named Outlaw, too. I know, exactly. Played at UNLV. Pretty if good I remember player. Right. Pretty good player. I think it could go back It could go back a bit further than maybe anybody in our audience could remember. Outlaw gets them both. It's 33-21. Yeah, that was much needed by UOP. They get to the foul line. They've got to get to the rim. They've got to get fouled. they got to win at the free throw line for them. Did you always believe in the adage, like, if you can get it single digits before halftime, that that meant something going into the locker room? Not really. It's more about how you're playing. And, and if Davis keeps shooting the three ball like that, you know, you hope to get to the locker room before it reaches a 20-point lead. Pepper's got three threes here in the first half. It's been a three-point shooting fest for the Aggies. They're up 15. Six. 
save by the Tigers, but actually stepping out of bounds. And is Pacific just looking for anything right now? Yeah, they just need the ball to go in the basket and they got to do it. That Aggies now are eight of 13 from the three point line. Yeah, absolutely. Is, you know, I'm, I'm not very good at math, but eight of 13 has got to put you around 65% somewhere in there. 61, 61 and a half. We won't quarrel over that. Okay, so that's, that's pretty darn good. Yep. That's a good way to get out of a slump. Mignon, runner right hand, too strong. But a foul against the Tigers. The Aggies are aggressive on both boards, too. Oh, way more. How, how many offensive rebounds has UOP managed to get? So the, the Aggies have four offensive rebounds. The, the Tigers have two right now. Yeah, for, for them to only have two rebounds, this is exactly what Davis needed was the physicality and keeping them off the glass and dominating. Yeah, it's been obviously, the Aggies will go into halftime being pleased with this, how they're shooting the ball, but they're going to be really pleased with how they're defending and rebounding. And another offensive rebound there by Pepper, and it was a long rebound and not a great block out by the Tigers, and Houston Davis gets the final shot here of the half. Yeah, this is probably going to be a shot to the rim. Look for this penetration to get deep. Oh, Two on naked. the clock. Fuller, and a block foul is going to be called first. So that'll be more free throws for the Aggies. That's a tough call as the shot clock. Fuller wasn't going to get a shot there. No, but it was a good call. It was. You, you know, you can't complain about sure. the call. You're not happy. Leonard Perry right now is not happy, but what he isn't happy with is not the officials. No. He's, he's not happy with the effort his team's brought to follow the game plan he had coming in here. So shot clock off now. Game clock at 12. A little 1-4 flat for Mannion. Well, I'm just a huge fan right here of an ISO and let him get to the rim. Ez throws it up wildly, didn't get it. And for the Tiger half, Crockwell off the screen, left it short on the elbow, and the Aggies get it right back. Yeah, that's a shot they want, though. They got to have him come in and hit that mid, little mid-range 8, eight ten foot floater. It's a good shot for him. Mignon off the screen. Ez had a really nice first half, 10 points. And Igwe on the low block has it swatted away by Bell, and here come the Tigers in transition. Well, you can tell with the very first defensive possession and the very and coming back offensively that UOP has more bounce in their step. Some of their ears look a little blistered. Yeah, Leonard Perry, I'm sure, had a motivational halftime speech for the Tigers. Yeah, it's an interesting generation of, of what motivates you. And sometimes just quiet conversation will get some of these kids going at a furious pace. Well, UOP definitely has something to prove right now. As with it along the baseline, a great screen. In fact, it was a moving screen, and that's why it was so effective from Caleb Fuller. And that seems to be a real point of emphasis, Coach, is the, the setting of the screens. You, you see that really heavily called in the college game. Yeah, it has been for years. They're trying to clean it up. They don't want kids injured. It's, a, it's an easy way for kids to get injured, set the screen. A lot of times, like in that one, it's more on the guy with the ball than it really is on the screener. It's a matter You've of waiting for the screen set. to get set. Yep. Nice play by Fuller. He was able to knock it off the Tiger. And the Aggies get it back. Another turnover for Pacific, their seventh of the game. That's too big a number. Uh, Leonard's comment was he wanted to bring it down. They've been averaging 14. That's right on their average, but he felt that had to be below 12. Mignon just too much speed right into the lane for two. That is a beautiful drive. Nice finish with his left hand. He's a very, very good player. I don't know how they always find these, these undersized point guards, although you know, Ezra's not as small as short in some of them. He, but boy, is he a great looking point guard. Yeah, Darius Graham, TJ Shorts, now Ezra Magnon. Of course, you had a great point guard here in your, your title run with Dante Ross. Yeah, well, that, that was another level at the D2 level. He was the best player in the country, I thought, that year. And we were just fortunate to have him in uniform for us. Pepper for three, didn't get that one in the corner. Bell handles for the Tigers. Hands off for Avdolovic. Gets it inside for Anderson. Back Avdolovic for three. It's in, and that's the shot they want and one. Yeah, and that's a inside out three, and that's exactly what he has to get. He's he's a very good open shooter, and that's really his first good open look. Yeah, but chance for that rare four-point play. 
Evdolovich again played at Vista Del Lago out in Folsom. Played at NEU for a couple of years before transferring back to Northern California. Well, every once in a while you have to go to the outposts before you can come back to civilization. And, you know, he's found his way back into the West Coast Conference and UOP, and I'm sure UOP is excited about having him. The game has adjusted to where the shooter is so much more valuable than it was 10, 15 years ago. You've got to have guys that are knockdown shooters. Yeah, but uh, of course with the transfer portal the way it is now and players being able to move without having to sit out of here, it's completely changed the game. Uh, it's completely changed recruiting, that's for sure. I mean, you'd have one assistant whose only job is to be involved with the transfer portal. You've got to know who's going to be available or might be available, and, and you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes on in that, that avenue. Bell on the diagonal for Bailey for three. Got it. How about that? A six-point possession for the Tigers. Yeah, that's a special possession for them because it gets them right back in it. They cut it to nine. They're right back in the ball game. They're alive defensively. Let's see if the Aggies can respond. Yeah, single digits for the first time here in the second half. McGill right side out of bio on the attack. May have pushed off, had it stripped on the way up, and Bailey comes down with it for the Tigers. So Pacific trying to keep the run going here. Anderson. Well, they're gonna get physical now. This is where they've had their lecture at halftime and they're gonna come out and be the more physical team and hit threes. Three straight threes for the Tigers. Bell from up top, it's 38-32, 9-0 run. Yeah, 9-0 run and coming out, Jim will have a timeout right here and get the Aggies back on pace. And Leonard Perry has to be a static mount and stole the momentum right from the get-go and they've looked tremendous doing it. You just notice how much more energy they have at the defensive end of the floor, how much better they're moving their feet, and they're flying around, and all of a sudden the ball starts dropping. And they got a steal here, Bailey the other Bailey way. Bailey in transition. And he was hammered by Adebayo, but a good play. Yeah, it's a good play. Adebayo had to send a message there and try to get up and contest it, but Bailey makes a nice steal and transition. Now he's at the foul line where UOP wants to be. Will they review this for a potential flagrant? I don't think so. I would be surprised if they did. I don't see any contact anywhere near the head. He didn't stay down on the ground and hold his head. I don't, I don't think that'll happen. Leonard's not flinching over there whatsoever on whether or not he thinks something needed to be reviewed. And we all know that offense helps defense. As a coach, it, it drives coaches crazy, right? Because they want defense to be totally separate from whether you're, you're making it on the offensive end or not. But yeah. it's the reality in a lot of cases. And, and the reality here is I think UOP's defense has helped their offense. Yeah. You know, and a lot of times kids look at it the other way around. If the ball goes through the basket, I get a lot more live on defense. That's true. But if you're live on defense, you have a better chance of having that ball go through the basket. Five-point game now, 10 straight for the Tigers. Pepper wants a clear out, gets it on Dolovich. Step back, long two, short. Rebound, Bell. Nice UOP's job. now winning the battle of the second efforts and the quick athletic plays. That's a hard drive right there. Now he is holding his head on that yeah, one. Abdolovich is the turn to this game. Tigers with the basketball trying to get within a single possession now. Yeah, I, I think he'll be back in the game. I'd be surprised. They're probably taking him back to do a concussion test. Yeah, got to put him through the they protocol. Do it. It's mandatory. But I think he'll probably be all right. Yeah, he's at the end of the bench now right gonna now. You're going to see Davis's best play right here. They're coming off to get something. Millig's pass deflected. Pepper tried to save it, but another turnover. Yeah, UOP's hands are way more active than they were the first half. Brown with a pull up, 18 footer long. Caleb McGill getting the rebound for the Aggies. Milling, handling, waiting for the Nigway screen, works against it. Aggies reverse it over now to Pepper. Eli had it going in the first half and a reach-in foul called. Yeah, this is where you see it's tough for Davis. If, if they aren't hitting the three ball, they don't really have that mid-range guy that can kind of take you and butt ball you down and get you into the basket, and draw a foul, or, or score on you. So they need to rely on movement. They need to rely on ball movement, man movement, and getting open looks. Ball lobbed in for Inigwe, and he traveled with it. Definitely stuttered with it. Yeah, that... <laughs> That was three yards in a cloud of dust for that move. <laughs> Woody Hayes would have been proud. Yeah. I hope football coach is in here. He'll be looking to recruit him. 
Might be a tight end right there. Dan Hawkins always looking for a good tight end. Tigers again can get within a single possession here. Bell, as they dump now to Bailey. Ball faking, working on Pepper. Back to the baseline, right hand shot off the glass. That was tough. Yeah, that was a very nice shot. That was a tough shot. The Aggies defense was very good there. He earned that. And Pepper was overplaying the left hand and Baylor was able to go back to his offhand, the right, to get that one down. Mignon back for Pepper in the lane, tries to get it to a dig way, another turnover. You know, pet peeves of coaches show up. Mine was always the direct pass anywhere, guard to guard, post to post, anything inside, you, you didn't throw it up in the air or a bounce pass. Because the direct pass is right where the hands are. Three for the tie, no good, but an offensive rebound to Bell. This game has dramatically changed here in the second half. Cockrell back for Bell for the tie. Too strong, high rebound taken by Milling. Milling's been effective for them. Looked good, but who can generate offense? It's, it's Ezra that can generate offense, and they need to find a way to get him to where he can get towards the rim. Nigwe faked on a three. Back to Ez, spins in the lane, hangs off glass, didn't get it. Fight for the rebound. It's volleyballed around, now to the floor. The Tigers come up with it. Thrown away, Anigwe, and what's the call? It's a win for the first time since the 30s, I believe. <laughs> Milling up top out of the break for three, didn't go. Uh, that was a good shot for him. They ran a good play out of the timeout. Aggies were 8 of 14 from distance in the first half. They're 0 of 2 to start the second. You know, the Aggies got great production off their bench in the first half. I actually thought it spurred them along. Let's see whether or not their bench can give them that jump this half. Again, the Tigers can get within one or tie on this possession. Cockwell working on the freshman, De Bruyne. Good defense by the freshman and a shot clock violation. Just terrific defense by Yeah, that DeBruyne. was. That's a much needed stop. Great defense. You talk about a nice, big, strong, physical body. Holy moly, that, that young pup right there. He's, he is a good looking athlete. De Brule is a big Jason Williams fan. He's sporting the Kings 55 jersey around campus. He's, he's, he reminds me of a kid named Scotty Darmstad that played here 20 years ago. Actually more than that. Pepper entering at the Murphy and a foul on the ground against the Tigers. Second foul on Bell. So the Aggies have only scored two points in the first seven minutes and 27 seconds of the second half. Yeah, they're obviously struggling right now. And this is what happens. You go through the lulls, especially when you're relying as heavily as they did the first half on that three ball. When you hit eight of 14, you look great. Now you've come out and you're not getting the same looks. UOP defensively has taken that three ball away from them. At least the naked open three ball. Fuller runner in the lane, got it. That was much needed. Now UOP has to come down and answer the bell and get right back after him here. Put the ball in Bailey's hands somewhere in the mid post area and I think you'll like what you get out of it. Right by Pepper, you love that. Shot didn't go, but he did draw contact. He'll get two free throws. Yeah, I mean, Leonard did a great job of getting the ball back in Bailey's hands. Bailey had six shots in the first half. Bailey needs eight to 10 in the second half. An explosive player. He'll shoot two free throws comes into this game. Just 62% at the line, however. 50% from beyond the arc and only 62 at the line. Yeah, it, it's not a pure shot. He's a streaky shooter, there's no doubt. You, you look at the, the shot right there, it's so flat at the free throw line, but when he shot his three well, it had great arc. So he's a, he's a streaky shooter, but he's just such a good athlete. He's physical, he can get to the rim on you. They just, you know what, UOP doesn't care uh, they want to shoot well from the free throw line. They like to make 80%. Everybody sure, would. Of course. But what they like is that their aggressiveness is there and they're getting back to the free throw line again. One of two makes it 40 to 36. Tigers trail by 15 at the half. De Brule goes cross court to Milling. Reverse back to De Brule. Enters it on the post to Fuller. 
And the Aggies might roll with this one, up 15 at the half, but UOP making it a game, down just four with the basketball. Bailey up top, gives off to Anderson. Tigers working it around the three-point line. Cockrell back to Freeman. Anderson's going to let go a left angle three. It's long. Rebound fuller. Good defensive possession by the Axe. Really good possession, but UOP did get a good-looking shot. I mean, that's kind of the shots they like. They want an open three or they want to drive to the rim. Tigers now 4 of 13 from distance. The Aggies 8 of 16. Milling, the Nevada transfer, has it left side. Cut off, keeps the dribble alive. Step back, fader, rolls around and out. Ball out of bounds, last touched by UC Davis. I like that look for him. He looks to be bouncy enough that he has that in his game. They need somebody to be able to score a mid-range game. It'll be interesting to see what UOP comes with here. You know, obviously you know what I would do. I'd try to find Bailey at the elbow, right where he is now, get him the ball. Aggies have their best defender, Addy Adebayo, on him. Cockrell dumps to Anderson on the block, working on Fuller, spins left. Aggressive moves. It negates the basket, however, for the Tigers. Lead remains four for UC Davis. They've been clinging to this lead for a while as we get to the midway point of the second half here. Nanyang, great ball move, but he traveled. You know, they're running the weave to a slip screen. It'd be interesting if they didn't slip that screen and they actually had it. You know, if they if they slow down just a little bit. It almost feels like the Aggies are playing a little bit faster than what they are comfortable with right now. Aggies now have 12 turnovers in the ball game. Again, another opportunity for the Tigers here to get closer. Anderson kick out, three ball, other way, got it. Brown's delivery. Anderson's proved to be a good passer out of that baseline area. That's his second assist this half out of there and for open threes. Just a nice little skip pass that time over the defense. Yeah. One point game. It's great vision on his part. There we go again, Fuller runs through that screen. I guess they don't want that screen there. Has left it short and the Tigers can't take the lead. Brown for three again, no. And the rebound is. This is where they'll push it coming back at them. They're waiting for him though, that's too bad. And Yang splits two defenders, kicks it to a trailing out of Bio and it's offensive goaltending. That's good to see out of Bio was aggressive there. Nice bounce pass to him, good at the rim. Addy will go to the bench, Pepper checks back in. Yeah, they need to see if they can catch a little bit of that first half magic with the three ball. And Pepper's the guy that needs to spur him on that. Get the ball from what you don't want to do is lose Adebayo on the defensive end playing against Bailey, because that's a good matchup. Yeah, he's done such a great job on him. Bailey, a deep three up top, swish. Yeah. This game's tied at 42. They've yeah. come all the way back from a 15-point halftime deficit. Yeah, Bailey is a special guy. He's a really good player. You can tell he's their team leader. Bailey's got 16 now to lead all scorers in this game. Magnon gets by his man, lays it up and in. Yeah, that's a great layup. He got to the rim, it's special. Bailey, uh, they only have Bailey at nine shots. How many shots does Bailey have? Yeah, six of nine now. Huh. And I've got, I've said he's got to get to 16, so oh, we could be in trouble with the, or they could be in trouble with the next seven shots. Bailey works it on the block for Anderson. Faces up on Fuller. Anderson coming back to the lane, back baseline, off glass, too strong, good defense by Fuller. Yeah, see that's not Anderson's game. He's much better at passing the ball out of the post and doing that when he has to spin move and try to create a shot. It's not really his comfort zone. Pepper gets the Murphy screen, pulls up 15 footer, off the heel, no, fight for the rebound, and Murphy over the back. What a great job by Jen Gross and company. The Aggies trying to finish up here at home against the Tigers, but the three point battle's really changed in this game, Bob. Oh, it's definitely changed the game. The, the UOP's doing exactly what Davis did in the first half. UOP's come out and made five out of nine in the second half, make that 
Ooh, I thought that good. was going down. <laughs> I was going to say six out of ten. But they've cut the battle where they're now six of 17, and the Aggies are eight of 16. So they've taken away the big advantage that the Aggies had. The Tigers. Aggies so far haven't had one. Yeah, Tigers still have not taken a second half lead. It's a great bounce pass inside. Big bounce pass. You kind of, I, right now, I feel a shift in momentum. They've come out, and I, I feel the Aggies seem to have settled down now, and they're just playing. I thought the Aggies seemed a little pressured start of that second half. Pepper's got 13 now for UC Davis. Seven minutes to go. Bailey operating 18 footer, got it. Yeah. Bailey's in his rhythm and when he's like that, there's not much you're gonna do about it. Bailey with 18 now on seven of 11 from the floor. He's also got six rebounds in this game for the Tigers. Interior pass, Inigwe goes right, comes back left, has it blocked, but the ball out of bounds. It'll remain with the Aggies. Yeah, Igwe, Igwe needs to pass that ball out. He's got three guys down in the paint around him. Aggies are a very good shooting team. With On the inside out, three is the best three you get in basketball. He needs to make that pass out of there. Tigers have won two straight. The Aggies have lost three straight here. Nine on the shot clock. Manyan. Looking to deal, bounces it to Inigwe. Into the lane, floater with the right hand, missed it. And a reach in foul on Inigwe. Inigwe's frustration is showing visibly. He's missed chippies, he can't get the ball to the rim. He's a big, strong, athletic kid, but he's really struggling right now trying to find a way to get the ball to go in the basket. Yeah, third personal foul on Inigwe. He's already fouled out of two of the five games so far this year. Yeah, and they're subbing him to get him to settle down a little bit. They're not worried about him fouling out. Six minutes to go in the game. Uh, you know, two-point game. They're just going to settle him down, and then they'll bring him back. So Murphy comes in. Tigers again can tie or take the lead. Bailey pushed off maybe long two. Nothing but net. Yeah, he got away with the push off there. That was, but he is feeling it. He's going to be, it's going to be hard to keep him from scoring the ball the rest of the game. Aggies may have to double team him. Yeah, or at least deny him, complete deny him, make him do something going back door. Pepper on the attack, hangs off glass, got it. Nice response by Pepper. That's, that's strength. I mean, he's a big, strong kid. He can get where he wants to go, and then he shoots a nice floater off the glass. Yeah, some old school basketball right there. Aggies regain the lead, at least momentarily. Bailey to Anderson, kicks into the corner for the lead. No good from Bell. Yeah, well, I think the, I think the Aggies are happy anytime they see somebody besides Bailey shooting the ball right now. Yeah, Bell one of six from downtown. What a spin move by Manyan, but left it on the rack, but there's Murphy to put it back up and in. That's a great hustle play by the freshman. Very strong, nice follow. Assuming your teammates are gonna miss a shot is the way to be a great offensive rebounder. Officially clutch time here inside University Credit Union Center. Under five to go, and there's the offensive foul on Anderson. Yeah, Bailey's very frustrated. The call's not on him, but he's frustrated that the call's on Anderson with that. Anderson's fourth personal foul now. But I'm, it's an interesting thing. Bailey's obviously feeling it. He's cooking right now. And they come down two straight possessions, and Bailey is not a guy looking to shoot the ball. Aggies can extend the lead here with 4.45 to go. Come on, Pepper! This is a big possession for both teams. Millie tries to throw out for Pepper, pass stolen. It's a breakaway for Bailey. Did he travel? No, he did not. Got the deuce. No, he, he, he captured that ball on his hip and was athletic enough to get it back to the rim. Bailey doing it all. He's got 22 now. He's got 22, and they've got great hands defensively when they're active. Almost half the Tiger points. Aggies almost lost it. Yeah, their length is bothering the Aggies when they're active and they're going for the lane. Fuller backing in Crockwell. It's taken from behind by Anderson. Ahead to Bailey. Has Magnon the beat. Off glass, missed it. Great defense by Magnon. That was great defense. It was a bad offensive transition for UOP. They didn't have good spacing. Didn't even really get a shot up. They just kind of threw it up at the rim. Pepper 
Fadeaway jumper, money. Oh, that was Jordan-esque right there. Little butt ball, 15 feet, turn around, shoot the fadeaway. Down here, out of a timeout. It's a crucial time of the game, three minutes to go. They're gonna run something to get themselves a great look at this time. Murphy out for Fuller, kicking back the pepper up top, deep three, no good. And here comes the Tigers again. Feel like we've been seeing it the whole second half with a chance to take the lead. Yeah, they have a, they have a chance here. And who's who's got the ball? It's going to be Bailey. The Aggies did a nice job there getting the ball out of Bailey's hands. One thing Bailey does, he's patient. He, he does not force it. They got the mismatch and then on he gets Manion. Fouled going to the rim. Yep, they got the switch that time, and Manion could do nothing but foul. Well, UOP has a distinct advantage at the foul line over the Aggies in terms of coming into the game, and it's proving this second half to be a big difference. It was different in the first half, but not very many of them. This half, it's a big difference. They're 9 of 13 versus 2 of 2 for the Aggies. The Aggies have been able to get to the free throw line twice. It was in the first half, and not at all in the second half of the game. Bailey working on a 23-point night now as he's tied the score again. And don't be surprised to see Bailey go for 28 to 30 for uh, ULP to win this thing. He misses the free throw though, and we stay tied. Yeah, they're just—they're not going to take the lead. They don't the want the lead. Two forty-five to go. This is usually Manyan time for the Aggies. See well, if the I'm magician. Sure they would like it to be. Loses control, able to kick it out for Pepper. Dribbles once left, the three ball is in. You know, they knew what they were doing when they ran the last pay to Pepper. And then this time, his poise on that was great. The lift fake, one dribble left and nails it. Manion, the key to get to the floor and get the loose ball. Yeah, it's almost like he did that on purpose just to set up the defense. defense, defense. Anderson reverses it to Bailey. Out of bio on him. Bailey into the corner, Anderson for three. It's an air ball. Yeah, the Aggies got what they wanted. The ball stayed on one side of the floor. Bailey, they didn't give Bailey room to go to work. They've got to clear out and give him room if they want to see him take the game over down the stretch. Aggies can make it a two possession game. Manyon pounds the pill up top, taking time off the shot clock. Works right side now, goes all the way into the corner for Addy, not a three point shooter. Pepper now beats the shot clock. NBA three is down. That was from the logo. You, you saw that going in the whole way. You saw it going in. Yeah, he squared up Anderson and just drilled it right in his eye. Two dagger threes from Pepper. The Aggies lead by six. Anderson tries to dish it off inside for Freeman. Throws it out of bounds. Score for him. And nobody else on UOP looks to be in double figures. Slow it down, slow it down. UOP's coming at you a little bit now with a 1 2 2 zone press. And they get and they the steal. away from Fuller, and that's hard to understand. You got Mannion on the team, and he is phenomenal with the ball, and yet you leave Fuller back there by himself. I'm not sure what they were thinking there. It was not the matchup they wanted in the backcourt. Byers will step to the line exactly what Leonard Perry wanted. Yeah, Coach Les wants him to move the ball up the floor via the pass, and Fuller decided he was just going to take the little guy off the dribble. Not a bad, not a good matchup for the for the Aggies on that. But UOP, let's give them credit. They change it up, and they immediately get the momentum turned. This is anybody's ball game. It's a five-point game now. Cut it to four here, and the Aggies have got to get the ball up the floor. Evan Mobley carried you. Byers got the first one, second one good as well. It's a four point game. And here comes the full court pressure. They got their three quickest little guys on the floor. Bailey playing the four spot now at 6'6". Six, six. This is a very quick team UOP's put out on the field, on the court. And the only guy that I feel comfortable one on one with the ball has got it in his hands right now, Ezra. Yep, Manion's just gonna kill time now. Shot clock down to 10, they'll start the offense. And Jan circles the lane. Pepper has it. Can he hit another dagger three? A step back 30 footer. It's in! Elijah oh, Pepper has done it again. His you know, third huge. To keep 
keep any chance of winning this game. 40.8 to go. The Tigers have to hurry. Down three possessions. Byers out the Bailey. A lot of time going off the clock. And Ball inbounded right to Pepper. And he is fouled. Yep. Pepper was not giving up that basketball. Yeah, and it's, it's good because they fouled him right before he went down. So that works in good part for the Aggies, not a good part for UOP. UOP wanted the immediate foul. They're in a hot situation. They don't want any time to come off the clock, and they needed an immediate foul. And they got to hope that Pepper has a little more difficulty with nobody in front of him and not having to shoot from 30. He's only shooting half the distance. You would think this would be no brainer. So number 40 will go for 30 here as they mop up the floor, but Pepper again, 11 of 21 from the field, six of 11 from downtown, but these are his first free throws of the night. It, it, Davis's lack of getting to the free throw yeah, line just two is free throws. mind boggling. You know, you've got two free throws, the other team has 19. You lead by six with 23 seconds to go in the game. That has to be close to a school record in terms of number of free throws. Yeah, the lack of number of yes. free throws, absolutely. Pepper gets the first one. Well, the good news is they are 100% from the line, Coach. <laughs> yeah, I guess there is a silver lining on that one, Scott. Can Pepper get point .30? He does. A 30-point yeah. night for Pepper. That's pretty special. UOP is a legitimate team. To score 30 in a game like this when your team needs it, that is clutch. And now Leonard Perry will take a timeout. It's desperate. Yeah, the Aggies 11 of 20 from distance tonight. The Tigers 6 of 19. Cockrell, he's got to hurry. Bailey throws it inside. They'll take the quick two inside the Freeman. And that was a smart no foul. And they got the ball to Ezra. Ezra's a, a money at the free throw line throughout his career, so it's a great move on their part. Yeah, career 81% from the line for Magnon. Threatening to be in the top 10 in UC Davis history in that category. Well, as a coach, and you got a point guard, he can get you a bucket. He's good defensively. Doesn't turn it over very much. And he's a great free throw shooter. We jinxed him. Yeah, no doubt. I'm good at that. Bailey, a quick three. No good. And that's going to do it now. That'll be the ball game. They will not 